Welcome, dear friends. Today we are going to learn about approaches to design controlled drug delivery system and which is dissolution controlled. Okay, so in this particular topic, we are going to see what are the different approaches and what is the dissolution type of approach which is used in formulating the controlled drug release dosage forms. Okay, so now let us begin with approaches to design controlled release formulations. The controlled drug delivery, it occurs when a polymer, it is combined with a drug or the active agent such that the release from the bulk material is pre-designed. In this case, what we are going to do in formulation of controlled drug delivery system, we are not going to use any other type of additive like disintegrant, binder, etc. We are just going to use a polymer and an um, active agent. This combination is used and the release from the bulk material, it is already designed when we formulate the dosage form at that same time we are going to control how will be the release of the drug from that dosage form. So all controlled release devices, they use polymers in the rate control mechanism. The controlled release mechanisms can be broadly classified into physical and chemical mechanisms. Now let us see what are the mechanisms of controlled drug delivery release. The physical mechanisms include dissolution, diffusion, osmosis, ion exchange. The chemical mechanisms include chemical degradation and enzymatic degradation. Now the dissolution based drug delivery system it is of two types the first is encapsulated dissolution system which is also called as reservoir system and the second one is matrix dissolution system which is also known as monolithic dissolution system the diffusion based uh, delivery system consists of again two types one is reservoir device and the second is monolithic again in this case in reservoir device the drug is encapsulated in the polymer and in monolithic device the drug is dispersed in the matrix of polymer the reservoir device uh, it can of diffusion type it can be of two types one is non porous membrane reservoir device and second is microporous membrane reservoir device the monolithic device it can be non porous matrix which might involve monolithic solution or monolithic dispersion. Whereas microporous matrix, it might contain monolithic solution or monolithic dispersion. So now let us see what is a dissolution controlled drug release. In dissolution controlled drug release devices, the drug release is controlled by dissolution of either the polymeric membrane which surrounds the drug core or polymeric matrix which contains the drug in the dispersed state. Drugs having high aqueous solubility and dissolution rate, they show challenges in controlling their dissolution rate. Dissolution controlled release, it can be obtained by slowing the dissolution rate of a drug in the GI medium by incorporating the drug in an insoluble polymer and coating the drug particles or its granules with polymeric materials of varying thickness. Since the dissolution of polymeric materials is the key to this mechanism, all the polymers used are water soluble or they are biodegradable or they are degradable in water. The choice of a particular polymer for a particular controlled release dosage form depends on the nature of the dosage form that is dissolution mechanism delivery period and delivery route what type of drug is being delivered etc so biodegradable polymers they are hydrophobic and thus water insoluble they however undergo hydrolysis and break down into the smaller units even though they are not water soluble, they are degradable in the body. Since the degradation products, 
are biocompatible they are widely used in control drug delivery systems the rate limiting step for dissolution of a drug is the diffusion across the aqueous boundary layer the solubility of the drug provides the source of energy for drug release which is countered by the stagnant fluid diffusional boundary layer the rate of dissolution that is dm by dt it can be approximated by the following equation dm by dt is equal to ads upon h here s is nothing but the aqueous solubility of the drug a is the surface area available of the dissolving particle or the tablet d is the diffusivity of the drug and h is the thickness of the boundary layer the dissolution controlled drug delivery systems can be divided into two different subgroups we have seen it earlier the first is encapsulated dissolution systems or reservoir system and the second one is matrix dissolution system or which is also known as monolithic system now let us first see what is encapsulated dissolution system or reservoir system in this system the drug release is controlled by the thickness of the dissolution rate of the polymer membrane here the dissolution property of the polymeric membrane is important and not of the drug okay so what we are going to do we are going to prepare uh, encapsulated drug reservoirs encapsulated in polymeric membrane which has got a uh, different thickness okay so due to this difference in the thickness we can control the rate of dissolution of the drug from the polymer membrane which surrounds the drug core okay once the coating polymer membrane it dissolves the entire drug is immediately available for dissolution and absorption now let us see this one system in this now you can see this outer membrane this thin membrane it is the immediately dissolving layer or we can say it is less thick and hence it will get dissolved immediately okay the inner if you observe this now this layer being immediately dissolving layer it dissolves immediately as it comes in contact with the gi fluids okay below that Im immediately dissolving layer is the drug layer and this drug layer is released immediately see the drug is released now below that drug you can find another dissolving layer and as compared to the um, earlier one this layer is slightly thick okay now it is the uh, chance of this layer to dissolve and this layer it will dissolve slowly because it is thick once this layer it has dissolved completely the drug layer which is embedded inside that polymeric membrane it starts to dissolve and this drug release occurs for 3 hours once this drug has been released then the gi fluid encounters next dissolving layer and you can observe that this dissolving layer is very thick so it will take little time to dissolve and inside this layer there is presence of another uh, drug core now this drug will be released for next 6 hours and now in this way we are able to sustain the drug release so the first laboratory which was involved in uh, formulation of this type of system was the smith klein and french laboratories and for the first time they introduced the spansule system in 1952 in the spansule spansule is the registered trademark of that laboratory here in the system each capsule it contains hundreds of tiny beads the drug containing core of each bead is surrounded by a layer of natural wax uh, which might be of beeswax or glycerol monosterate the drug release kinetics from each bead is controlled by the thickness of the wax layer as we have seen in the earlier example similarly uh, what they have done in spansule they have prepared 
drugs um, in the form of tiny beads okay and each uh, drug core is coated with varying thickness of the um, uh, natural wax okay which might be beeswax or glycerol monosterate okay so as it it has got a uh, different thickness so the release pattern is also altered we get a prolonged release since the wax layers vary in thickness the drug delivery from the beads is sustained and the spancule system was designed to sustain drug release for about 12 hours the first drug used in the system was dextroamphetamine sulfate and its brand name was dexedrine which is used to treat narcolepsy which is an uncontrollable need for short periods of sleep obesity and it also treats certain behavioral disturbances in the children in 1961, again, Smithline and French Manley and James Laboratories Division, they introduced CONTACT. CONTACT is a registered trademark and CONTACT uh, capsules they had prepared and these were for relief of common cold and hay fever. Uh, next was SODAS. SODAS stand for Spheroidal Oral Ab Drug Absorption System developed by Elan Corp in monks land athlon island it consists of multiple 1 mm spherical particles stored in a hard gelatin capsule the spheres result in a wide distribution within the gi tract and are surrounded by rate controlling polymers that allow dissolution and release to be independent of the ph and the food a proportion of the beads are made to release the drug immediately and half of the portion they are made to sustain the drug release and how we can control this drug release by varying the thickness of the polymeric membrane the second example which was very famous was plendil it is a registered trademark of astra mark plendil is a felodipin extended release tablet Felodipine is a calcium channel blocker and hence it is used in the treatment of cardiac patients. Felodipine tablets, they are surrounded by a second layer of gel forming substance, which is used, the gel forming substance, HPMC. And it is activated upon contact with GI fluid. That means when the layer of HPMC, which surrounds the tablet, it comes in contact with the GI fluid, at that time, it um it gets um swollen okay and it forms a gel okay and this gel uh, forming layer it also contains some amount of felodipine so this layer it will start to get dissolved uh, inside the body and along with that gel dissolving gel the uh, drug which is incorporated in the gel it will also start to get dissolved so um, the first drug, uh, sorry, the first or immediately released uh, drug from this dosage form will be the felodipine molecules which are incorporated in the gel. Okay, so a uh, felodipine is so in this way we can increase the time or we can sustain the release of felodipine for almost 12 hours. Okay, by using a controlled rate by diffusion and dissolution through gradual attrition of the gel layer. The type and amount of the gel forming substance, it determines the drug release rate. Okay. Now, um, uh, the major disadvantage is that there might occur dose dumping if the tablet is divided or crushed. Okay. So, this is the HPMC layer and this HPMC layer, it also contains felodipine. Okay. And the inner blue core is pure felodipine. Okay, now as this HPMC layer, it comes in contact with GI fluid, it, ex it forms a gel. Okay, uh, so this gel, it will start to erode and the drug which is incorporated in that gel, it will also start to diffuse. Okay, so in this way, the there occurs prelim preliminary release. Okay, so next, after this complete HPMC layer, it has been dissolved, then this core drug core it is um, uh, it becomes available okay and um, 
it comes in contact with gi fluid and then this drug reservoir it gets uh, dissolved and absorbed okay so in this way we can prolong the release of felodipin the next type of dissolution based system is matrix dissolution system which is also called as monolithic system in this type of device the drug it is homogeneously distributed throughout the polymer matrix okay so what happens here a polymer matrix is produced and the drug is dispersed throughout that polymeric matrix so the drug molecules are released as the polymer matrix dissolves since the size of the matrix decreases as more drug is released the amount of drug released is also decreased thus the drug release rate decreases and it results in non zero order release matrix system are also called as monoliths since the drug is homogeneously dispersed throughout a rate controlling medium example uh, what you can use for rate controlling medium includes beeswax carnauba wax hydrogenated castor oil the granules obtained they are either filled into hard gelatin capsules or they are compressed into tablets adelet is a very common example adelet cc it is a registered trademark from bayer okay adelet cc is an extended release formulation for nifedipine nifedipine is also used for cardiac patients so it is a tablet which consists of three parts the exterior film coat um it is for light protection the outer coat for slow release of nifedipine and inner coat for for fast release of nifedipine the film coat it is made up of hydroxy propyl methyl cellulose polyethylene glycol ferric oxide and titanium dioxide the outer coat and inner coat they are made up of hydroxy propyl cellulose lactose corn starch cross povidone microcrystalline cellulose silicon dioxide and magnesium stearate the outer coat which is slow release which slowly releases the formulation it contains nifedipine which is distributed in the matrix of a hydrophilic gel forming polymer okay now this is the tablet here this is the film coat this is the inner coat and this is the outer coat if you see this if you observe this film coat then in it appears like this you can see here this is the polymer matrix and embedded or we can say dispersed in the polymer matrix is the drug molecule okay so one on contact with the gastric fluid an erosion process begins at the tablet surface the nifedipine contained in the matrix is dissolved and absorbed as the tablet passes through the gi tract with advancing erosion of the outer coat the fast releasing inner core of the nifedipine is exposed and it starts to dissolve okay the decreasing rate of nifedipine released from the tablet's outer coat is compensated by the increasing nifedipine release rate from its inner core okay so what is going to happen this is the outer coat it will start to dissolve slowly then the inner core is dissolved and in this way we obtain complete drug release so this was all about the dissolution approach of drug release thank you for watching